What's up everybody, my name is Kason and welcome back to another War of the Visions Final Fantasy Brave Exvius video. Today is going to be my 6 star gear ultimate guide. I'm going to show you what materials you need to craft them, how to get those materials, and I'm going to break down all sorts of pieces of equipment that are 6 star that I think you should try to build or avoid. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to cover is the crafting materials need to make a six star piece of equipment. Now, this is going to assume the base knowledge of being able to craft a plus five piece of equipment. So if you are brand new to the game and you don't know how to craft a plus five piece of equipment, go watch a guide on YouTube. I know that Nerd Knight has a really great one from a long time ago if you wanna check that out, as well as I know some other content creators have created some as well. So if you don't know how to do that, please go watch that video before you get into this. This is going to assume you know how to do that. That being said, the materials that we need in order to craft a six star piece of equipment. The first thing we need is for, let's say you are a piece of equipment, we need a plus five piece of a gear. So if we were crafting a six star Hermes sandals, we would need a plus five Hermes sandals. We would need 10 of this new material that we will go into called heart quartz. And this heart quartz has a rarity difference. So it has four different rarities. We need 375 books of refinement of that type. We need other materials. This is very uh, specific to the piece of gear, so I haven't written out what exactly you need. It's not a whole lot though. It is typically about the amount of stuff that you would need to craft maybe two or three of the piece of equipment. Uh, not plus fives of the piece of equipment, just standard. So not a whole lot of materials. And then we need one extra recipe of that piece of equipment. So previously we needed 63 to make a plus five uh, piece of gear. Now we need 64 total including the plus five already in there. So just one extra recipe. So don't freak out. We don't need a ton of new recipes. Just need one extra from where we originally started. Uh, so hopefully this little graphic kind of breaks down what exactly you need to build it. And now we need to get into how we obtain this new material called heart quartz. Now heart quartz is available through a new mog shop that's coming this Wednesday called the Crafting Metals Mog Shop. Crafting metals are obtained in a couple of different ways. The first way is through our arena that we go through every single week. So depending on how high you place, you will get a set number of metals. So you won't receive the heart quartz from it, you'll receive metals, which is better because otherwise you'd have to place like crazy high just to get the good items. That's not the case. You will get metals based on how you rank. Uh, so that's a really easy way to just freely obtain this every single week. The other way is through your daily quests. So those missions tabs uh, that pop open every single day and saying have to complete, you know, um, a story quest or like whatever you guys know what i'm talking about that is where we get the crafting medals so you go into the mog shop with your crafting medals 15 of them will get you one ur heart quartz 10 of them will get you one mr heart quartz and so on going down this way uh, i do want to note before we get into the specific pieces of equipment that i don't think it's ever worth it trading for r I can see some circumstances where it might be worth trading for SR just because the SR equipment is so much cheaper and the relative drop off for specific pieces of SR equipment, so not all of them, but some of them is not drastic at all compared to MR. In fact, I think there's probably a couple of niche cases where certain SR equipment might actually be more valuable than some of the MR equipment. So we will break that down in just a little bit here. All right, so for six star equipment, I've got a graphic for every single type of equipment. This is probably overkill, but I wanted you guys to be able to see all of the different stats and stuff like that for all of the equipment that has six stars. Now, all of the equipment that I will be showing today is all of the six star that is available on JP right now. And if there is a star right here, that means it will be available on June 22nd, which is this Wednesday on Global. So if it has a star, you can build this right away. If it doesn't have to star, you'll have to wait until the six star version comes out. So the six star axes, um, I would say the golden axe, I think is just still the best by default. It has slash tick 15 still, and now it has a crit damage bonus of 10. This is really nice because uh, offensively, there's a lot of times where you might have maybe like seven or eight total trust stone passives that you'd like to throw onto your piece of equipment. 
having this crit damage 10 is just one less passive that you have to put on a trust stone. Uh, it's almost always a nice bonus to have as a damage dealer, so I really like this. And the stats on the Golden Axe are just really, really good. Um, the Mithril Axe, however, though, with the 204 attack and slash attack 20 now is not a massive drop off by any means in terms of damage compared to this guy. So if you were to have a crit damage trust stone and you equipped a assault mithril axe, your damage really isn't going down very much. Um, it's actually pretty crazy. The slash attack 20 modifier is really nice. And I could, I would say it's pretty much the same way for both assault or critical versions. Ogre kill is trash. You don't want that piece of equipment and we'll move on to the next guy. So Books is up next, and the Lunar Tome received an Accuracy 10 bonus to its passive. This is nice in certain situations, and in other situations, it's kind of niche. I would say if you're building an Accuracy weapon, this Aim Lunar Tome is fantastic. The Accuracy 10 with 28 Accuracy is really, really good. Um, in terms of the raw damage stats, the Magic Attack 20 is nice on the Monstrous Compendium, but the Magic stat is only 147, so this is not one of the pieces of equipment where I would recommend the SR version. If you're going to build a, a six-star book, you got to go Lunar Tomb, either Magic or Aim in my recommendation. Next up, we have six star bows, and this stat right here, 39 accuracy for the aim version of a rune bow, that is not a misprint, that is legitimate. So, Setia users out there, or any other bow user who has issues with accuracy, holy cow, this is incredible. It still has the missile attack 15, now it has an additional accuracy 10 passive, so you don't have to worry about that on your trust stone. If I'm building the rune bow, I'm building the aim version. I know the attack is not very high with 121, but with this kind of accuracy stat, you might be able to get away with building like assault set on your trust stone. Uh, even if you don't, the accuracy set, you're going to hit everything with this kind of uh, accuracy stats. So you gain a lot of attack from your trust stone, so it's not as big a deal anymore to have this stat lower. But yeah, this accuracy stat's crazy. Other than that, I don't think many bows here are really worthwhile. Um, it's possible that the Great Bow Assault version might actually do more damage than the Ruin Bow Assault version because it's only 21 attack lower and it has a 5 modifier higher. But again, I think if you're just going straight damage, you're probably better off still doing the plus 5 Platinum Bow uh, over any of these bows here. All right, six star daggers. Uh, there's just really two to highlight here because this Mithril Dagger's stats are really, really abysmally low. So we don't want to look at either one of these guys here. The Mage Masher, though, received a passive that I really, really love. Uh, it already had the Slash Deck 15, but now it gained an initial AP 10. This is not something that you can get from a Trust Stone passive. So this is something completely unique to this weapon. Um, you start the battle with 10 more AP. Uh, as far as I'm aware, that is not 10%. That is 10 flat more initial AP. So that is just a really, really nice passive. Uh, it might make the difference of having to not run AP sets on your trust stones. So this could be really, really valuable. So this 223 attack mod in the assault with the initial AP is just really great. I think Mage Master 6 star hit it out of the park. This is really great. The main gauche was already a really great weapon for evasion units. It now also gained a crit evasion bonus of 15, which is really nice. If you're going main gauche, you're going the dodge version as 28 evade. Enough said about that one. For six star fists, now you're going to notice uh, these three pieces of equipment. Basically, nobody ever ran any of these. It's still going to remain true for the mithril claws and metal knuckles. But the cat claws, who... I think we're pretty much laughed at for a really long time. This piece of gear is actually kind of legitimate now. Uh, so I want to break this down a little bit for you guys. So the Kaiser Knuckles, as comparison, have a strike attack 15 bonus just like this. Because the Kaiser Knuckles do not have a 6 star version yet, even in JP. They have 180 attack. The same, almost the exact same stat line is for the, uh, the Queen Fist. I can't remember what that's called, but Queen's Fist from Persona 5 attack stat is almost the exact same. So you're basically losing 16 to 20 attack going to Cat Claws compared to the other ones. However, the big kicker here is this has six agility on it. Six agility and to a lesser extent, seven evade. Man, that is really, really nice to have. If you're running somebody like a physical queen um, who doesn't necessarily have like an agility TMR on her, an extra six flat agility could make a huge difference. So I actually really like these Cat Claws six star. I think this went from like a joke of an item to something that's actually like top tier in terms of a fist weapon. 
six star gloves the dark gloves were basically the only usable glove up to this point and looking at the stats here i don't think that really changes you could use a magic set for the battle gloves or i as a crit version but you're losing quite a bit of a magic stat it's not like a drop off of 20 or 30 you're losing 60 going to the magic or if you wanted to go all the way down to critical you're losing like 90 so i just don't think it's worthwhile i think the dark gloves gaining max damage 1000 is nice for pve content uh, but overall nothing crazy of a boost i think you still want to build the dark gloves overall all right, six star great swords. Now, this Crimson Saber and Rune Blade are not available this Wednesday yet. You're going to have to wait and see on those. But I just wanted to show you what they look like, basically. Um, so it still has this defense down on basic attack effect that he used to have uh, in the slash deck 15. But now it has this 30% magic buff. This is fantastic for rain. It's not going to bring him into like relevance or like a top tier unit. But this is the same effect as a Galmia Coat, which can be huge for example i think rain's uh base stat magic is like 400 or so that being said this would raise his magic by a good like 115 120 something like that so this could be a really really nice buff to rain uh the golden blade stays true to what it does assault at attack version is just crazy high stat gained a 1000 max damage so this is definitely your pve greatsword and the rune blade received kind of a nice buff in the sense that it received slash attack 10 so the damage version the assault version is not nearly as far behind from the golden blade as it used to be but it still has the slash resistance 8 so if you have more trust stone passives that you're trying to equip and you didn't want to have to throw in slash resistance also this could be a nice thing to use the Shimmering Blade is essentially only for Orin and Velric. Uh, it gained crit damage 10, which is nice. You're basically only going to use it for those two units, and you're going to continue to use it for those two units. Next part is this second step of the six star great swords and the mithril saber has a slash attack 20 bonus which is really nice but these stats leave so much to be desired I don't see a situation where you're ever going to run mithril saber and claymore is even worse than that one. Six star guns. Now, Razel Gethi received max damage 1000, which is kind of underwhelming. The one positive it did receive, though, is its agility used to be negative three, and it no longer has a negative effect to its agility. So it has just normal agility, which is a nice little buff. A lot of times, gunner units like a Frederica you want going very, very fast. So not reducing the agility is a nice buff. Still has, obviously, the highest attack stat with the 228. But this Vega gun, I want to talk about. I said early in the video that I think some SR weapons are worth building. The aim version of this weapon, I think, is one of those weapons. I ran some damage calculations earlier on Wode of Kelk. And as a comparison, if you were to run the aim version of Vega, so the aim version of Vega, with your Trust Stone set being Assault version, the damage and accuracy versus a Raz Al Gethi Assault version with an aim set of trust stones the numbers are extremely similar like like very similar actually um, so if you don't want to spend the extra currency on mr heart quartz and you use a gunner unit often especially one that you want to pump that accuracy up this accuracy stat is really really high missile attack 20 is nice i think the aim version of vega is very usable even with that high attack drop off um that, that accuracy stat is just really, really nice. The Capella is pretty much junk, and you won't use that. So next up, we have six star katanas. Uh, starting at the top, we have the purple lightning. This, again, is not out this Wednesday yet, but I just wanted to show you what it gets. So it has ice attack 30, slash attack 20, crit damage 15. Received a nice crit damage bonus. Again, a very usable thing. This is actually a higher modifier that you can get on a trust stone passive. So I really like this. And I think I actually now start to like the crit version more than the assault. Because this 26 crit with the crit damage bonus could be very useful for last well so i do like that quite a bit this osifune um, is a pretty solid it gained another critical damage 10 so instead of receiving the max damage bonus it actually received crit damage 10 which i like a whole lot more uh the crit version has a scary 35 critical uh so i could see a case for I mean, honestly, any of these three, but I think the Assault and the Critical version are definitely the best. These other ones, this Kiku Ichimanji, the only case I can ever see for this is instead of the Assault Osufune, you could kind of do the Assault Kiku Ichimanji just because 
it has five higher modifier 25 less attack so probably pretty comparable damage uh if you wanted to go the cheaper route and weren't looking for an aimer critical version six star maces we've got the platinum mace now this received an accuracy bonus of 10. so this is a little more situational so if you're looking to fight um you know more evasion heavy teams this could be good but i honestly think this just kind of missed the mark so it has 221 magic on the magic version but you're gonna see this mace has no accuracy built in whatsoever so even though it has the accuracy 10 passive this mace is really not doing that much for you in terms of hitting dodgy units you could easily slap this accuracy 10 on a trust stone passive and like it's just really not a big deal to me so i think they kind of missed the mark here the healing mace is not out yet but this is one that has kira as an active ability on it It has the magic attack 15 which is the same as the platinum mace and it also has healing power 10 now so i actually think this is really nice for like a supportive unit healing power actually does quite a bit in terms of amplifying healing power so even though I don't think either one of these maces are spectacular, I think the bonus that Healing Mace got is actually probably a little better in my book. Uh, that being said, the Mithril Mace and the Iron Mace are absolute garbage, so if you're using a mace, you gotta pick one of these two. So pick your, po pick your poison, pick your favorite, and uh, just ride with that one. Next up, we got six star Ninja Blades and the Sasuke's Katana, just like the Mage Master, received a fantastic bonus. I love this initial AP. I think this is fantastic. The Assault stat is really high, 248. Otherwise, you can run 25 crit. Either one of these versions is great. Stay away from the Vital, obviously, but this Sasuke's Katana has received a really nice six star buff. The Kodachi is actually not too bad either. With a Slash Attack 20 modifier, you could run the Assault version of 196. Six. I wouldn't do the critical because you're missing out on the high critical stat would, that would be on Sasuke's. But if you're looking for the budget option, again, not a huge drop off from Sasuke's to Kodachi, especially because it is hard to get that 248 attack stat. That being said, I think Sasuke's is just the best because of the initial AP stat. But yeah, again, budget option, Kodachi's not too bad. Six star spears. We've got the ice lance again. This one will not be out this Wednesday, but it does receive an accuracy 10 bonus. Um, uh, please ignore this evasion stat here. This was a mistake on my part. Uh, this is not actually part of the, the ice lance. It does not have any evasion. Uh, however, the assault attack stat 158 is not too bad. With these kind of modifiers, this is a nice piece of equipment. A little accuracy bonus is kind of fine. Just whatever. Uh, I suppose you could run the aim build, but. 110 attack stats kind of low it's kind of up to you on how you want to do that um if you're running like a victora or an rna you're going to run ice lance every single time anyway so just kind of up to you on which version you want to run the drake's horn spear uh kind of received a little bit of a buff in just terms of a pve item I'm actually really happy they did this on this item specifically because this weapon is something that basically just never sees any sort of PvP action. So giving it the max damage 1000 at least gives it some sort of reason to be used. So if you're doing guild raids or something and you want to get your damage up, you could use Drake's Horn Spear before it was basically useless and now it could actually have some sort of function. The Mithril Spear and Partisan, I think you want to stay away from. The Mithril Spear does have a really accurate aim version with the Pierce Attack 20, but I think it's still pretty rarely that you'd want to use that. All right, six star staff. So first, Sage's Staff, which is coming out this Wednesday. Accuracy 20, Magic Attack 20, and Casting Time down 250. If you could somehow plus six this piece of equipment, this thing is phenomenal for casters that take a while to cast their spells that being said this a piece of equipment is so hard to get a six star just like a hermes sandals or platinum armor it's so hard to get so good luck out there trying to get it if you can awesome platinum rod another piece of equipment that i think used to basically just be kind of trash uh gets a nice upgrade and this could actually be usable so just like the initial ap being its own unique passive this receives agility 10 percent, and i think this is great for the platinum rod because of one specific reason this agility 10 percent isn't on other pieces of equipment you can't get a trust stone passive with an agility percentage up you can run agility sets but you don't find this on any one trust stone passive so agility 10 percent. let's say the average agility is right around like 60 on a base stat so you're basically going to get like six agility from this rod. So having a six agility rod is really nice. And the best part about it being on the passive is that 
even if you ran another piece of a gear like a TMR, like um, like Lucia's Bewitching Boots that have seven agility on it, normally if you ran another piece of agility equipment, that thing would get cut in half. Uh, but this 10% agility does not. So you could run a seven piece of agility gear and have another basically six coming from this. You can have a really speedy staff user here. So I think that's really nice. The Magistral Rod, which is Yuna's staff, uh, gets a nice boost with the light dark resist. Those are just two really common... Um, elements in the game uh, so having seven resist against that is really nice and it still has the magic attack 15 evocation gauge 30 so just a nice overall staff and it does have a very high critical rate if you wanted to run some sort of critical build um, i would actually go so far to say this might just be the best version because this crit is so high the healing staff i think is really niche i think it's probably outdated uh, it received a nice magic attack 20, which is nice. I kind of look at this Cura ability, unless like you're running PvE, like tower content where you need another ability, Cura is pretty useless this, these days. So magic attack 20 is not bad, but I think you're just going to find better luck with these other rods. The last one is this iron rod. Don't ever use this. This thing is absolute junk. It's not even a magic staff. Let's move on. Six star swords. Now, three out of the four on this page are not out this Wednesday. That's the Lazalia sword, Coral sword, and Nagnarok. This is Agrius swords from the Final Fantasy Tactics rerun, which will come by in a few months. This sword has a nice ice attack 30 and slash attack 8. The stats are really nice because it has 28 accuracy. Enough said, it's just a really good sword for an ice unit. Uh, that's pretty much all that needs to be said about that. Coral sword has always been a good lightning uh, sword. It always had 30 lightning attack, slash attack 15 is great. Also received a 10 critical rate. This is really nice, especially because the lightning element in general is really crit focused. So gaining a 10 crit rate without having putting it on a trust stone is just really, really nice uh, for whoever uses this. The Nagnarok received the max damage 1000. So very similarly to the Drake's Horn Spear, uh, I'm glad they gave it to this sword because it's not a great PvP sword, but it does have use now in PvE. So you have reason to build this. The next one is the Brotherhood, which uh, compared to the lightning swords that always, you know, like Buster Sword has 30 lightning attack, 15 slash attack. Brotherhood kind of got hosed before. Well, now with the six star upgrade, it's actually getting kind of a hookup. It is getting the 30 water attack, which we like to see. It still has slash attack eight. So honestly, Titus is just getting a 22 modifier increase. Or if you know, the normal rank Zazan also getting a 22 modifier increase. We love to see it. Continuing on with six star swords, this is my last page of weaponry. The flame tongue is not out yet, but it's gaining an accuracy boost of 10. It's okay, kind of kind of meh, but it's fine, I suppose. It's not really an accuracy sword, so I don't like seeing the accuracy bonus on a non-accuracy piece of equipment, but could have done worse things. Uh, the sleep blade, this is just a really niche item. I just don't, I just don't care for it. I think it was bad. I think it's still bad. Uh, they gave it magic attack 10 along with like this slash tech 15 being on it. So I guess like it's more of a catch all in terms of like who wants to use it. You know, if you have a user like maybe like a Terra or something that wants to use both magic and slash tech. But that being said, she probably just wants the spirit pen sword or a flame tongue. So I just don't think sleep blades very good. This mithril sword slash tech 20 is a really nice modifier. Um, and the attack stat's 158, so not awful. So if you did want to get by on a budget sword, mithril sword assault, uh, you could do worse than that. Okay, so we are all done with the weapons, so we're going to move on to the accessories next. So this first one that we have is the Hermes Sandals. I don't know a single person that has a, would be able to have a six-star Hermes Sandals. If you do, you're awesome. Uh, but it's a really good piece of equipment if you can get it. Titus's necklace is something that's coming by here in the FF10 rerun. Honestly, I'm really underwhelmed by this. Uh, this is a piece of equipment that I run somewhat. Uh, I think it's a good piece of gear, but it's gaining TP 15%. I just... I just don't understand this. Um, I know that Titus has like buffs and stuff for TP, but this just seems like a really weird buff to throw on here. I think they really missed the mark with this one. Uh, I think the barrier version is still the best because it gives 18, but yeah, this TP 15% just kind of sucks. Jeweled Ring is a very niche uh, piece of equipment. If you need Paralyze Resist, it can be fine for that. It has this new effect of gaining AP on like a critical hit thing. I'm actually not 100% sure on how this works, so it could be valuable, but from the way I was reading it, it just seemed kind of underwhelming. The same with this Sortilage gaining attack and magic up on crit. Uh, I would have to do some playtesting to be able to give you a more accurate representation of how good I think this is, but at first glance, I don't think they're great. 
Next page of accessories, kind of same thing, fairy ring and hero's ring. You're just really not gonna use these. Fairy ring, if you need silence resist, cool. Otherwise, you're not gonna use either one of these pieces of equipment. Last but not least, we have all of our armor equipment. So we're gonna start with the heavy armor. This platinum armor, absolute top tier piece of a gear, piece of gear, 10 unit resist, 10 strike resist, elemental debuff resistance, 50. This piece of gear, if you could get a six star is just incredible. Uh, but having to get that is a lot of work. Um, I know I don't do enough like of the, not arena, the other form of PVP, it's slipping my mind here, but to get the PVP medals to get this gear fully maxed up, six stars would just take so long. Realistically, nobody's gonna get this. The golden armor, however, is one of my favorite buffs. There's a handful of pieces of equipment that receive this same type of buff and I absolutely love it. What if it was reaching a point where gear that just has something like a slash resistance eight was really getting power crept because you could throw a trust stone passive of slash resistance seven on literally anything. So pieces of gear like this were just really underwhelming. Uh, now what they did is they added slash resistance debuff resist 50. If you don't know what that means, that means there's a 50% chance that anytime your character would have a slash resistance down effect placed on them. So let's say Cloud comes up and uses Braver against you. There's a 50-50 chance that that slash resistance down won't happen. It doesn't reduce the slash resistance down by half. It's it, a percent chance. So 50-50, it just won't happen. The important thing to remember here is that there's a trust stone passive of attack type resist debuff resist. So stacking that with this, which you can do because they are not the exact same wording, I believe it is a 25%. So that means if you were to have both of these on, you would have a 75% chance to ignore any slash resist debuff. This is huge, especially with where this game is headed. Um, there's more and more debuffs happening in the game, whether it's elemental or attack type resist, whatever it is, it's happening more and more. So having debuff resistance is really crucial uh, in this game. Mithril armor, it's kind of whatever, strike resist 10. I'm never really going to use it. It has 20 evade, which is kind of cool for a heavy piece of armor, but it's really, really niche. Iron plate you're not going to use in any circumstance. And we have six star clothing here. So now the light armor version. The platinum robe, this UR piece of equipment, is receiving a nice 15% HP bonus. I do like this because this is higher than a trust stone passive of 10%. So nice little bulk up for anybody who's trying to go anti-missile. It also would then open up a trust stone passive slot for you to throw on whatever you want, maybe an elemental resist or something like that. Uh, but the ones that I really, really like on this page for the same reasons that I liked the golden armor are the smart coat and the Fides Lucerna. The smart coat still has the magic resist eights, eight, but it now has magic resist debuff resist of 50. Same with Fides Lucerna, the Slash Resistance 8 now has the resistance, uh, debuff resistance of 50 to pair along with it. So exact same type of thing as the Golden Armor. These two pieces of equipment received really nice bonuses. I like both of those a whole awful lot. Going on to this next page, Scholar Robe, you're never going to use this. Move along. And just a couple more up, you guys, before we finish this six star helms. Uh, I was pretty much always somebody who stayed away from helmets. However, if you are going anti-resist as a heavy armor user, this golden helm is now actually very viable. Uh, the missile resist debuff resist 50 is great, along with the missile resist eight. So this piece of equipment is really nice. I actually don't mind the lower defense that much anymore, just because so many attackers have so much defense pen that I actually don't value defense as highly as I used to. Um, so you could do this option or even go the vital version. I think this is a decent piece of a gear uh, versus missile comps. Um, I don't think for the armor, the MR or the SR version are really any good. And we'll move on to our last page. So lastly, we have six star hats. And if you guys are watching to this point in the video, I really appreciate it. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you like this type of content. And uh, yeah, let's go and finish up this video. So we have six star hats here. The wolf mask, I think, really missed the mark, to be honest. It started with this 15 accuracy, which is really cool. 10% HP. I just really would have liked to see this piece of equipment come with something else different. Give it like an initial AP startup or maybe like a dex percentage up or something, something more niche, something more different. 10% HP, I can get on a trust stone passive and this really just doesn't give me any reason to run this piece of armor. Um, again, it's a, it's a hat. It's not an accessory. So this thing really just doesn't give me much of anything. The Sage's hat, 
Um, I think there's just better pieces of evasion gear. This is pretty close to being top tier evasion, but not quite. 27 evasion with an 8% bonus is nice. The crit evade 15 is, is a really nice bonus. I like that. Uh, but honestly, any of these hats, I'm really not going to use. So that's it, guys. If you like the video, I really appreciate you watching to this point. Please leave me a comment down below on what types of guides you would like to see from me. And I want to do a character guide, another lightning element character guide coming up. And if you guys want to let me know in the comments out of these three characters who you would like to see, uh, please let me know. Um, I already have the next one lined up, but the next one is up to you guys so i'm thinking about potentially cloud charlotte or ibarra they are my three most popularly used pvp units so whoever you would like to see out of those leave it down in the comment below and that'll be the second character guide from now that i do so again thank you guys so much for watching hope you have a wonderful day